Okay, hey everyone, this is Nemo, I'm back with Hoko, doing another commented Hello. replay, trying to do these on a semi-regular basis. Um, the game this week is a 2v2 on a tiny map called Cooper Hill. Um, I'm gonna I'm zooming around a little bit just to show you some of the terrain. It's got, obviously, a huge hill in the middle. Um, the, the defining factor of, of this map is that uh, holding the center gives you a really strong defensive position, but the resources on the t north and south in the middle um, are traversable by vehicles. Um, so if you, you can invest a lot in holding the center, but the real kind of danger to towards your home base area is uh, through the north and the south passages. Um, any Anything you want to add to that, Hoko? Um. Well, yes, it's kind of very interesting because you'd uh, think the map would want to put the flag on the middle, but uh, as you said, it's like it's mostly a point that really helps. The that's why you notice most of the fights um, are usually happening. Uh, fights happen in the sides and not in the middle. Right, right. Yeah, the prop like once folks get up there, it's really hard to push them out um, without Indeed. borders or something. Okay, well, should we get the game going? And just show the sites. Yeah, okay, obviously. All right, yeah, we'll talk about the players. Sure, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, on the left, we have Kamar playing Soviets, as ever, or Kamar. He was correcting us Kamar. as to the, to the yeah. pronunciation of his name last time. Um, Very important. Yeah, and Codeman playing as Germans. On the right-hand side, we have Yuri also playing as Soviets, as usual, and Hoko playing as Italy. Um, yeah, so it's a very small map for two v two, so things get crowded. You can you can even see by the starting positions that the the players are started kind of like elbowing each other. Um, so yeah, uh, ready to unpause? Yeah. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. Off we go. Um, so one one kind of facet of the game for team games on small maps is that uh, the resources are shared. Uh, we have a thing called communism mode, which doesn't only apply to Soviets, it's for everybody, where uh, when you capture a flag, the resources you gain from holding that flag are split among everybody on your team. Um, so you don't have to be like, hey, that's my flag, don't touch it, I'm, you get that one, I get this one, don't worry about it, everyone shares everything. Um, what you can see currently is that Soviets uh, players they're uh, bringing the vehicles and trucks uh, forward to try and make strong points on the two flags. Yeah, absolutely. Which is really typical kind of Soviet play, right? Like, like jump a bunch of stuff forward as fast as you can and set up a little stronghold. Um, yeah, let's see. It looks like they've both been fairly successful. Yori's having a hard time getting it. I think, I guess these hills are just barely pathable by the trucks, but they both got them up there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it looks like, okay, so Kmar got this, Kmar, excuse me, I'm going to keep getting that wrong, got the south. Yori doesn't have his uh, MG nest up yet, so this is actually kind of a tricky encounter for him. Um, especially, so I mentioned that the tactic for Soviets is to rush forward with all your trucks as fast as you can. The counter tactic is to bring forward your AT guns like we just saw in the north here, um, where Codeman's AT gun was able to s drop one of both of those trucks, actually. One of them was a gun and one of them was a transport truck, um, weaving Yuri kind of stranded there. Um, he doesn't have as much force here as he might want otherwise, especially now that his uh, m uh, Maxim, the heavy machine gun, is kind of being flanked a little bit. Um, so, uh, I, I missed it down south, you ran away, what happened? Well, they brought the mortar and yeah. the machine gun, so <laughs> I didn't really work. I yeah. hoped uh, I would uh, at least snipe at least uh, uh, one truck with my uh, AT gun, but it didn't really happen. No luck. Uh, yeah. I'm now trying to flank from the south. Um, we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, it's, it's also, really I, tough on a small yeah. map. Go ahead, sorry. Also, I have a scout there. Up oh, yeah, nice. Checking stuff up. So were you... It doesn't really matter now. Uh -huh. Were you planning, like, okay, I'll go arty and then... Or I'll, I'll go artillery and try to snipe them, or...? Uh, no, I actually went for mortars. If you can see, that's what I'm producing. Um, basically, oh, yeah. everyone went um, 
Everyone went here var uh, infantry, except uh, Codemen, which started with guns. Huh, yeah, it, I guess, I mean, again, the consequence of the terrain and the small map, right? Mm -hmm. Although I, I definitely remember having a one-on-one -on -one against you on this yeah. map where no. you rushed My me with vehicles. Think paint and to the motor in the south. Oh, yeah, they couldn't make it around. Oof, that's it's tough. The consequences of flanking. <laughs> well, like I was saying, it's it's such a small map that the fire arc on that machine gun covers just this enormous chunk of map. Indeed. You know, on a, on a slightly larger or more open space, you can kind of you can get around it or you can at least avoid walking into it. Okay, so it looks like Yuri cleared up the north. Again, same thing, like you said, the the Soviets with the MG in the mortar early on, it makes it really tough. Um, it's, it's funny because I think Kamar was saying like, yeah, Soviets are total, like no good on small maps. Um, well, yeah, go ahead. It's, it's kind of true because uh, I, I've made some mistakes, like not using my infantry gun until now, and when I essentially now got my mortars, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't push them to the front fast enough, and uh, Kumar was smart to get his own mortars, which d just went out of the uh, barracks now. Um, it's, it's, it's basically... In order to exploit uh, the Soviet weakness in the start, you have to, like, storm them or really, really rush uh, your uh, units. Um, since I failed to do this, um, he could consolidate his uh, position and basically win um, for now. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Make make life really difficult for you. I mean, and, and Yuri did the same thing facing Codeman in the north. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, I, I, anyways, I mean, the reason I say it, I, I, I don't kind of fully, uh, like, I, I understand why folks say yeah, Soviets really struggle on small maps, because if you miss, if you mess up your start and you get something important picked off, um, like you lose a truck that's towing your heavy machine gun or whatever, um, mm -hmm. life gets really hard really fast. Um, but like, it, that's just a function of how aggressive or conservative you are with deploying that, in my view. You can also see the scope sniper that, uh, well, you should have seen, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Picking up a uh, mortar, I think it was, or it will be. But uh, basically, I really misuse it. It's, it can be so much more useful. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I, I, I haven't been, I don't know that much about the Italian units other than the kind of the basics. Um, yeah, so, well, yeah, basically, the. Two main assets you start with the scope sniper, which has uh, a range that is uh, actually a bit be uh, larger than its uh, um, sight and any other infantry sight. That means uh, against Soviets, especially, it can pick the either the machine gun or the uh, starting mortar. Mm -hmm. um, I see that. Oh, yeah, and but, you're using it with the spotter. I see. Nice. But this was too late because um, first Kumar has a scout that is now seeing more mortars which are going to get killed by um, his mortars and I was hoping I can kill the machine gun with my mortars but I was mistaken <laughs> uh, the Ooh, and you effect. lost them all at once that's tough <laughs> yeah, yeah that I was... mean the, the consequence of clustering them I guess right yeah it was it was really Bad call on my part. It <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, you, I think you were you were sort of forced into making a slightly aggressive play there because if you just let him have the side, you know, it's like he can do whatever he wants. You have to kind of like dislodge him, um, and mortars are definitely the tool to do that with. I, mean, you're like, I can't fault any of your thinking. Basically, <laughs> I think you just it was some un, unhappy positioning and the fact that Kmar was proactive about scouting your mortars, um, so he yeah. can bomb them off pretty quickly. Basically, I have a very... Well, I was... I, I think I did uh, need to retreat uh, and not commit my mortars alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe. Or, I, it's not like... Well, 
be more cautious cautious you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and but and i was gonna say well maybe it would have been better to kind of try to take the center and bring your mortars up there but it, again came yes. already had control and so like we talked about pushing someone off that top is really expensive uh, unless you have mortars. unless you have mortars, well, that's true so and, and that was that was pretty much i think the the real option either um coming uh, at the center or using my motors from further down south uh, to pick uh, the machine gun mm -hmm. first. That would have uh, caused the motors, I think, Kmars motors to move and hopefully I could pick them. But um, basically you can see how uh, um, it was just uh, melted by now and Kmar has motors which I have at the moment. Right, yeah. I mean, after after you had like 20 guys pinned there, right? I mean, that was a big, <laughs> that was a yeah. painful moment. Indeed. It's do not charge stationary machine guns unless they're dead. Just yeah. a friendly rule. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess as I, I like to try to present some more beginner-oriented stuff every now and then, um, that was a great example of, of the suppression mechanic. So... Uh, Hoko had a bunch of infantry. He wanted to try to kind of attack this stationary defensive uh, setup, in, which included a heavy machine gun. Um, and as they got, as they started taking fire from the machine gun, they became first suppressed, which means they can they move much more slowly. They're on the ground and they crawl, but they can still fire. Um, and that you see a yellow star when that's happening. And then they became pinned, which is a red star. And then they just kind of curl up and do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, w once you have a big group of infantry pinned like that, it's really a bad situation unless you can take quick action. Oh, man, you just lost your storage. Oh, yeah. man. Well, wow. motors, I, I could barely do anything. Yeah, yeah right, no, totally. This is when I tell uh, Yuri that he either wins the game on the uh, north or I lose the game. Yeah, and right. And if you can see, most of what I'm doing is just retreating. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't. Yeah, that was not much to be done when he, when he has a scout like that, and the mortar is just kind of like plink, plink, plink. Exactly. Yeah, and and Yuri can't really come to help you. He's kind of stuck himself against the echo. It says. Yeah, although I would say I, I'm a little curious about Yuri's decision to tech up just now. Um, I feel like, I mean, like it, he was in a difficult position similarly because you were in a difficult position um but yeah. kind of t like r the, the, uh, more troops on the field would have been i think kind of a useful thing i don't Probably know more, i think more mortars could help but um snipers snipers can take care uh, back how it is yeah i don't know i mean he has mortars i mean they're 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 certainly doing stuff yeah. but he just doesn't have the screen to get sight for them it looks like to me i don't know mostly so you know it's it's just he did try see his fighting both troop by uh, Kamar and Codeman. Yeah, so it yeah. was pretty obvious that something drastic has to be done. Yeah, no, that's fair. A tech, a tech change in that case does make sense. And I see you went to go assist him with it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, after after losing the storage for to Kamar's mortars, it's really kind of like, well, <laughs> unless something magical happens very quickly, that's the end. And indeed, that was the end because nothing magical yeah. happened. Yeah, it was the, well. Without storage, it couldn't even build mortars to counter yeah, Mars right, mortars. Yeah, right, right. So it was pretty hopeless. Yeah, which is you know by design, but tough to be on the receiving end of. <laughs> yeah, that, that's part of what's interesting in small maps. Um, you can just deliver a killing blow like infantry uh, pretty fast into the game with mortars. Um, that makes it like very action packed. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally love infantry maps and infantry games, um, and so mm -hmm. it, I was really glad to see this replay that it, it was over at 12 minutes or so, because <laughs> yeah, so yeah. many of the games that we have on a regular basis are more like, eh, 40 minutes, eh, 50 minutes. Um, wow. But that, which are good too, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Whatever people like, uh, yeah, they yeah, can't yeah. really argue with. Yeah, I know, for sure. Um, <laughs> let's see. I, I'm, I'm just kind of poking through the stats, seeing if there's anything really interesting um i mean kamar yeah kind of his 
It's very, very uh, consistent, or rather from like six minutes onwards, you know, spike in active units and everyone else kind of getting pushed down. Um, I'm on the bottom of units killed. I'm like, I didn't do anything <laughs> yeah, losing yeah. this game. <laughs> but, uh, well, yeah. Well, it's hard always, when so many of your guys uh, run into uh, It's probably a retribution MG. for last week. Yeah, right. And but, the, the hero, the hero Garand. Mm -hmm. Okay, well. I think well, I don't know if there's that much more to say about this game. It was pretty, uh, pretty fast. Um, pretty straightforward. Kind of, very un good kind of play. unforgiving. Uh, Kmar really didn't. Kmar, I, I keep messing that up. Uh, he re yeah, well. <laughs> he really didn't let you uh, kind of recover from some of the early mm -hmm. setbacks. Um, so it was good, kind of like aggressive play on his part. Yes, and I didn't uh, play as aggressive as I should have against Soviets. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> or well, I mean, but conversely, I mean, one of the main things that was tough for you, I think, was that you overcommitted uh, right into the Maxim, right into the heavy MG. Yeah, so... I was. I, I didn't plan my motors to just disappear. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Suddenly they're gone. <laughs> Suddenly they're gone, and with them, any prospects of victory. Right, but, right. Well, yeah. Uh, big lesson of spring 1944 that well when attacking either keep reserves or don't attack if you're not willing to lose your units yeah it, it is true at least at the, especially at the infantry stage there's there is not a lot of uh, wiggle room for like mm -hmm. uh, attacking and then falling back without losing something of your force um, mm -hmm. like, especially if there's suppression involved that, that's pretty much always going to be you know Okay, well, I think oh. I'll wrap that on up. Keep this one short for the day. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks, Hoko, and thanks, Thank folks who checked this out. See you later.